the next chapter of the Elder Scrolls series is game director at Bethesda, Todd Howard. I don't even actually know where to start because I have so many questions, but... Um, it's that big a game. Maybe we should start with just finding out what you brought us today. Uh, we're giving uh, your audience a big sneak peek. We have a 30-minute demo we're showing in private here at E3, but we're going to give you guys a really, really big chunk of it. Um, this is Skyrim running on the 360. We have a brand new engine we've written for the game, all new graphics, all new gameplay. We just try to make a big, crazy role-playing game with as much stuff as possible in it, just overwhelm you with detail. I mean, obviously, A, I would not have thought the 360 when I first looked at it, but I'll take your word at it, Todd. Um, I mean, what have you done that's less apparent with the graphics engine and the way that you presented the game? It's, you know, for us, all the little things that you're seeing here, like plants, micro detail, big epic things like mountains, you can walk to the top of that mountain. So we really deal with levels of detail, streaming that in. We have to draw everything. We can't hide it. Um, you know, being able to look at all these plants, pick up the flowers, we're really big into just suspending your disbelief that you are in this world. You can play in third person as well. Um, so we have a new animation system, which looks great. Um, a lot of people like to do this, something we spend a lot of time on as well. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's, are, are, are you guys just a little bit crazy when it comes to putting those flowers all <laughs> on the ground? Um, we are crazy. We have a really big team of amazing people at Bethesda, the group that did more, went Oblivion, then Fallout 3. And after Fallout 3, we jumped on this, and we just wanted to make, you know, hey, let's throw the stone as far as we can. And then, so you have um, a sort of a new AI system as well. We do. We have uh, this new system called Radiant Story that makes the game dynamic for you. What we're showing here is um, you can swing. Your right trigger does your right hand. The left trigger does your left hand. Um, you can hotkey items. So I'm putting a healing spell on my left hand. So you are who you play. You want to play like a battle mage, you just do it. You don't have to pick some character in the beginning. You can put that spell in either hand. So right trigger and then left trigger. What's really cool is if you pull both triggers at the same time, you're going to get a bigger, more powerful version of that spell. Um, up here, this is new. These are called uh, the Guardian Stones. These are standing stones in the game that you'll find, and they help you define your character by kind of having the stars bless you with a special power. You can only have one of these at a time. So this one right here, the Warrior Stone, is going to make all of your warrior skills increase faster. But so this is not something that you pick in the beginning of the game. This is something that nope. happens along the way. No, you find them as you play. These three are kind of the basic ones. You find them uh, very quickly. All right, let's tell me after combat here. We got some wolves here. And as you do things, you know, using your sword, using your shield, you're just going to get better at those things automatically. Your skills are going to go up, and then every skill you increase is going to make you push more toward leveling. Uh, this is cool. First time we're showing it, the game's interface. Um, so it has four different sections, and you can look at all of the items. And we have thousands of these things. And what's really cool is they're all 3D. You can look at them, zoom them around, um, see like what kind of culture made these. And our artist just went to town. I mean, literally thousands of objects, right down to the these elven helmet, um, the food you pull off creatures, pork or meat here. Um, there's salmon. And you can cook those things, and they become better. Um, just the level of detail that we go to is, is it astounds even me. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 that we're teaching kids if you cook your salmon, it will on the whole It's taste better, better for you, yes. And this is the skills menu. So you look to the stars, and it's like you have this custom constellation for how you've been playing the game. And what's really cool is when you level up, you get to pick a perk. So each of these is actually a perk tree as well. And then as you play, it's drawing this constellation for you. So just looking at your perks is a lot of fun. And then the map here, it really shows what the engine can do. We're just pulling the camera back, and, and there's the world. Wow. Um, back to sort of the, the classes that we saw there, you have taken a new approach with the leveling system where you're not kind of setting yourself on your path before you've started playing the game. Right, you just play, and then you get better at certain things. Then when you level up, the perks let you define your character even more. This is one of the first towns you come to, Riverwood. Um, and here you're going to see some of the dialogue here. And it looks it's like the, the, when you're conversing, if you played Fallout, if you played Elder Scrolls 4, camera zooms in, you're kind of looking at the It's all real people. time. It's kind of just a trim thing for us now, not to take you out of the game. Um, and you'll see people having jobs. You can do all these things as well. So, one so of those, no, I can, I can pick up a job, too. If I think, hey, blacksmithing looks awesome, I can... You can do it. Smithing is a skill. You can improve your weapons. We have a working economy that you can either do. You can actually sabotage this wood mill if you want. Um, so, and so am I going to be able to participate in that economy? 
Uh, slightly. It's kind yeah. of, you know, we, we, it's a light touch, I would say. Right. We have horses as well. Now that this horse is, doesn't have yeah. any armor right now. It doesn't. Uh, <laughs> insert all the jokes you want. We'll, we'll sell it later for exorbitant sums. Yeah. Um, so horses are a great way to get around the world faster. Yeah. We're riding up into the mountains here, and you're going to see the weather change uh, dynamically. Yeah, now, obviously with, with all this free roaming, sort of, there's always been that ebb and flow from Morrowind to Oblivion of, you know, do, do you allow the enemies to sort of level up with you, or do you, can you inadvertently wander to an area where you have very high level enemies? How have you dealt, dealt with that? It's something we've done differently each time. This works very much like Fallout 3 um, in that uh, there are harder areas, there are easier areas. If you, we do randomize it a bit to keep it interesting based on your level. Here you're going to see the, the biggest mountain in Skyrim, the throat of the world. And at the top of this live the Greybeards. They're masters of the voice. And that's one of the powers you learn. This is one of our uh, dungeons, Bleak Falls Barrow. It's one of our over 150 dungeons in the game. And, and, and here, the ancient Nords used to worship dragons. And they're long lost to the Elder Scrolls. But as you guys know, they're, they're back in this game. And, and these dungeons are hand hand drawn. Yep. There's they're all right. handcrafted. The whole world is handcrafted. You put 150 handcrafted huh? dungeons in. Uh, we spent a long time. Yeah, you're gonna see a dragon coming in. Um, they're unscripted. You know, we don't know what they're gonna do. Right. Um, so they're 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 great. You know, they came out way better than we thought they would. And so you know, we were very conservative initially in our design, and now we use them everywhere. We just let them free roam and let them cause havoc. Well, I gotta say, uh, looking at that dragon, I don't think it sounds like Sean Connery. Uh, Todd, <laughs> you have to stay right there yes. because we need to see more Skyrim. So there's no more choice coming. here.